Okay, hi, I'm Nigel, and I'm here with my colleague David, who's going to be taking you through some of the other content. Um, I work for IBM, I'm based in the UK, and I'm actually a maintainer on our open source Egeria project. Egeria is part of the LFAI and Data Foundation, it's a graduated project, um, and we've been involved since the inception of that project. And the purpose of Egeria is all our metadata, so that's what we're going to talk about today and what exactly is the problem that we're trying to solve um, through um, a solution like Egeria and other software solutions that are out there in the metadata space. Now, some people will know a lot about metadata, some people maybe not so much. So the first thing to think about is, what do I mean by metadata? So what we have here is a, a picture from Brighton where I live. This is a, a famous pier. You may recognize that or maybe you don't recognize it, you know, it depends if we're in the UK, maybe more people recognize it. If I was over in the US, less people would. And so what metadata gives us in this context is all of this additional information. This is from Apple Photos, and it's telling me things like, what's the location where it was taken? Oh, apologies. What's the location where it was taken? Um, what device did I use? What were things like the shutter settings that were used? And also, maybe things that I've curated, like tags I may have added, that might help me in my searching for photos later. And the important thing about this as well is, over time, there's become a lot more standardization about the format of that metadata. So you can use different photo apps with all your photos, and you can kind of get a consistent view across them. So standards is actually really important as well. Now, if we look in the organization, this is actually um, a map of a lot of systems within a bank that we worked with um, who are actually still involved in the project. And this just shows you all of the different systems that are collaborating, different flows of data, uh, different service calls. It's complicated, and it's got more and more complicated over time. You know, this has been going on for many, many, many years. And when we're trying to do our data science, we're trying to um, develop new AI algorithms, what's really important is that we actually understand not just what all these data elements are, but also things like the flows between them, who owns them, things of that nature. And when we look in these enterprises, what we actually find is that they're using a lot of different tools. So they may have tools from one vendor which um, works very well for their development um, teams and diff very different tools that maybe are used in their data science teams. And what we typically see is, although there might be metadata, for example, about database tables that um, are being used in the data science space, they're probably in isolated silos. So other tools, um, maybe in development, for example, or business reporting, they don't have access to that same metadata. So there may be repetition, there may be inconsistencies. These tools are not working together. And we can see one example of that here. So this is a scenario where we've got one person, Callie, and there's a whole lot of personas we've got uh, in our documentation you might get used to when you refer to it. This is one of our personas. And she's actually using public data um, from a local government um, data source and from the employee directory, and she's going to try and join them, and she wants to send birthday cards. And what's actually happened here is that she didn't understand enough about the information that she was using. Because if, for example, in, in the UK, many countries, you may have uh, two dates associated with a date of birth. There's your actual real date of birth, and then when it was actually registered. So you've picked the wrong field, you've sent, in this case, birthday cards to, um, people on the wrong date, and uh, it's obviously not their birthday, so you failed in your objective. That's a very simple example. That's just birthday, probably not too upset, but you can imagine many cases where using that wrong data is going to get you into problems. The other thing about metadata is there's a lot of different types of metadata that you'll see in an organization. It could be things like the, the technical metadata, which describes the fields, the columns, uh, the tables, um, store procedures, etc., within a relational database. But then you may also have um, 
an enterprise glossary you've used where you try and describe in a consistent way all the terminology that you use in an organisation. So how you describe a customer or how you define um, a remuneration in some way. And you want those to be consistent. So there's an implicit linkage if they're using them to describe. And of course you've got your policies maybe around how you control data, how you worry about things like archiving. And so what is important to recognise when we're managing metadata is the linkage between those, and that's a critical element of um, managing metadata. So there's lots of opportunities if we get this right. Um, this allows you to do things like look for new business, um, become more efficient, become more agile, and be able to do that across many different parts of the organisation and meet compliance, etc. So a few little quotes to finish this little section off. Um, David Weinberger, um, British, I think, mathematician, I think. Um, metadata liberates us, liberates knowledge. And actually we can think of examples like going back to the Second World War where actually metadata was so important in understanding how um, different sort of organisations communicate. Tim Berners-Lee, data's a precious thing and will last longer than the system themselves. Um, that is just supporting the fact data is really important and metadata tells you what that data is. So there's a few more quotes um, that you can read uh, as well here. And with that, um, I'm going to ask my colleague David to talk just a little bit more about Ageria itself and metadata. Thanks, Nigel. OK, my name is uh, David Radley, and I'm uh, an Ageria maintainer like with, uh, with Nigel for IBM. And I was, he's, a, he's explained the business problem that I think you're probably familiar with. I was just going to check how many people here are work with data and metadata. If you put their hand up. One, two, five, six, seven. <laughs> All right, so most of the people and uh, the others I assume are interested in this area. Okay, that's, that's good. So what I'm going to do now is um, the title of the uh, talk was about building an ecosystem in open, uh, around governance of data and metadata in open source. We talked about the business problem. What I wanted to talk about was the vision. How would we really like it? And then we'll talk about the software that can enable it, which is, which, which is going to be Ageria in our case. So what we're talking about a, a sort of a new dream, a new manifesto for, man for metadata and governance. Because um, the maintenance of governance of, of metadata for all of this data, which is vast now and diverse, it needs to be automated a lot. So I've got this robot to represent automating. But also it needs to be provided to the business user appropriately. So it needs to be um, nurtured um, in, a, in, in a very special way to make sure that the, the data is appropriate for the, for the different roles in the community. So that's, that's one of the things that we think is very important. Um, we want the availability of metadata to be everywhere. So we want it to be knitted through our tools so that metadata discovery and maintenance, for example, is the bottom one, is around in every tool that accesses the data so that metadata is taken out, sucked out, and can be, can be seen. So this is sort of making sure the access is open as well. So not only to see this metadata, but we need to know what it means. We need to sort of codify it in some way to have open agreed standards um, around the elements and of, of the metadata, but also similar to this sort of um, bespoke sort of um, consumption, it needs to be personalized, it needs to be appropriate. A, a data set for a, um, a data scientist needs to be prepared in a certain way, which is different for a data set, say the, the owner of the data will need a different view of that and the consumer of the data for application development would need a different view of that data, though fundamentally that would be a data set at the technical level. So my quote at the top was, you may say I'm a dreamer, because this is the manifesto, but I'm not the only one, we're in a community, the open source, I hope that someday you'll join us, which is the whole point of open source. And uh, the last one I made is because metadata can drive you on, was uh, was my was my change to the last uh, one. So that's uh, <laughs> but it seemed quite appropriate because we're all talking about metadata that we want to understand in an open way and having community around it to agree the standards that uh, we want to go forward with. 
So Ageria is um, an open source project, as Nigel said, uh, as Linux Foundation. It's trying to make real that vision. So it enables the sharing of knowledge. We have um, uh, a distributed federated model, and we have agreed open types that describe the various parts, the types of metadata, everything that we think is important around an information ecosystem, from its governance, from policies, um, and uh, the semantic meaning of things, and the technical metadata. We have um, agreed in some open types, which I'll talk about next. And this is, a, this is the open types that we have here. So these are really the, the, the core of Ageria. This is how we have a common, com a common language to, that enables one tool to talk to another repository um, using this common language. Because traditionally, integrations between these metadata um, services and repositories have been um, maybe, it's difficult to know what, the, what it, you know what it means in one repository. You know what it means in the other repository, but can you get a consistent mapping between what it means? It's very difficult because they've each got a slightly different nuanced view of what, what it means. So the way we solve that is they both map to a, what, uh, an agreed open standard, which the, these are these open types, not technically a standard for the standards person here, sorry, but it's uh, an open, um, the set of open types that Ageria has that are very well understood so we say, it has to mean this for you to map to it. So we have a way of communicating uh, using these open types, which is um, probably the main way, the main value that Ageria adds. Of course, many vendors would have a set of types for these things, and there are many metadata standards. But often the metadata standards are on an industry basis, or they're for a very small area of metadata. This it has got a very wide, it's describing, it's looking to describe everything. And we've made a, a pass at it with some very expert people to come up with this first pass of these open types that we hope is good enough. And we've improved them slightly, with, we've versioned them um, with time as well. It's backward compatibility with these types. And if you don't think these types suit you, then you can extend them or add new types. And so it's a growing organic thing. But the more that we can agree on, the more that we can, we, with the more that we can write tools around those agreed things. That's the sort of idea that we have it in the open type model. We can then write code around it and exploit those types and know what it means. So the more we can agree, the better. If we all have our own language for everything, it makes it difficult to communicate. So a common language is the first step towards communication across cultural boundaries. And I was thinking this would, we all know that the, the data warehouse guides and the data scientist guys and um, the, the people who own the data and the DB admin have very different languages. They're very different cultures. They're different people. They've got different motivations, different roles. These are these, this is allowing us to have a common language to cross those cultures. They're not sort of, um, but we, I could definitely recognize that within organizations. These different ways of thinking, different motivations for different groups lead to different cultures and different um, hopes and dreams and, um, and uh, motivations for each of these groups. So these are the main areas for the open types. Um, we have um, the base types for systems and infrastructure. We have technical metadata like um, assets, APIs, um, databases, um, topics for events. We have metadata discovery, we have reference data, collaboration things, we have policies in the governments, we have a semantic world. And um, it seems that the most important part is actually the linkage which is between these areas because these are often, as we just talked about, separate areas. So we actually have, within the meta model of Ageria, lots of linkages. You don't need to learn this, but it's in the, the slides if you, like, if you download it afterwards. But um, one that's quite interesting is that you can associate a meaning with a technical <coughs> metadata. So a column that is a national insurance number, you can actually associate with that um, with the meaning in the semantic layer. <coughs> and this is, a, this is a slide showing that some parts of the organization may already know what um, something means. 
and other parts don't. Because of this, the siloed nature of um, existing uh, infrastructure, it's difficult to connect those two people where who have, one has the a question and one has the answer. So Ageria comes in and um, it, through this, uh, this idea that we talked about, that it has the common method to be able to, uh, the common way of representing um, things in metadata, these open types, and it's, um, it, it covers, it can be deployed on all these different types of platforms like um, data lakes in the cloud, and IoT spaces, application development. Um, I'm just gonna quickly go on. This is an example about how looking at metadata, um, how, how metadata gives value to me. So the bottom layer, this is a, a string and we, we don't know really what it means. Like some things like to see some numbers that might be interesting. Um, the first thing we can do is put across structural metadata to get the technical metadata. So a database columns, for example, or um, just splitting them up. Um, and then the next level that we can go to is put in, um, actually relate them through to meanings in the semantic world, the glossary terms, and then create a semantic model relating how um, managers and employees are related with is there and has a relationships. So this is um, a really um, powerful way of bringing the language of the business and be able to work at the language of the business and then and map it down to the actual technical ones which look a bit like gobbledygook if the business person has to deal with that directly. Um, we also have the ability to classify things. Here it says sensitive. We have confidentiality levels that you can place against the technical assets or you can place them against aspects of the um, glossary terms and the like. <coughs> so the data needs to work harder. So we've got, as we have this data and it was very safe within a little silo surrounded by an application, it had its own pr protection. As we now bring it out to be able to be used for analytics or governance to get a coherent view across the data so that we can meet compliance regulations like GDPR, like where's all your customer information it could be split between many different silos of information behind many different um, applications. As we take away the protection of those applications, we need to re-add it um, and re-secure it uh, across, across all the data that we've now exposed potentially. So that's why this, this making data available is very close to the governance um, program. It needs to, we need to work out how we want to govern this data, probably based on its meaning, rather than that it was DB2 or Oracle or, or whatever. Um, though there can be some factors around particular databases that are sensitive as well. So that's the, the idea that potentially these, um, these turtles um, uh, or tortoises are lost, they lose their protective shell and they, they're looking a bit embarrassed and they're a bit exposed at the moment. So they need, they, we need to be able to put something back in. So Ageria, as it's, um, as it's taking away the shells effectively, needs to add something back to be able to protect them again. So we've got a big tortoise shell now <laughs> um, called Ageria and it's now consider, um, it now has to, um, look after those, um, that, that, that metadata. So it's got concepts like zones you can, for assets, so you can actually deal with things that are sort of at the right level. You can have development aspects of a zone, you could have a production zone, you'd have an archive orientated zone, you could have sandboxes. There's different approaches that it takes, as well as effectivity. You can use, um, the, this is a, Algeria is a metadata layer. So um, that's so that's why we're um, we're talking that it needs to um, be able to store the policies and the rules, uh, which we have places in the metadata for, to be able to um, keep the, the data safe again. So in operation, Ageria it can be it can live in all of these different spaces like we saw on the other picture it could live in the cloud on prem uh, close associated with iot um, here we have um, ageria platforms so the way you run this is that you have a platform and that's effectively a process 
And instead of writing lots of different um, bits of software, bespoke software for all the different ways we wanted to use uh, the metadata, for example, um, to as a, as a view service or as a discovery engine or um, <coughs> as a metadata repository, um, what, what we've actually done is encapsulated that in configuration. So the platform's there, and your configuration describes what the type of server is. So you run these yellow blob, or these orange blobs, um, as servers um, that run on the platform. And, um, that's, and they're all configuration orientated. And by default, those would be in files. And um, are, we, are we just about, am I just about finished? Okay. Two more on slide. Okay. Um, so that's how well the Egeria platform and servers are about. Nigel is going to go on and talk about, um, going to a demo, and he's going to talk about uh, how you can get involved with the community. This was sort of an, ov an overview of some of the general ideas about why we think Egeria is an important place um, to be able to manage your metadata and govern consistently. Over and it's you. demo time. So the challenge always is how do you represent the stuff that you've been working on? It's kind of, um, it's kind of middleware, right? And, and metadata, it's so important to us all. But what does it mean in terms of actually visualizing it? What could we show you? So what I'm going to show you today is some uh, Jupyter-based notebooks that we have. So this is deployed, can be deployed locally, but typically be deployed through Kubernetes. It's a Helm chart. You can go out, to look at our documentation, nigeriaproject.org, which is on most of the charts apart from this one, I think. Maybe it's just a bit dark. And that gives you instructions for running what I'm going to show you now. And in fact, if you look at the foils later, there's a few links here. I'm not going to talk about these, but if you pull down the charts, that gives you a few links to the specific demo. So we're going to flip on over to um, the web browser, hopefully, if I press the right button. Always the hardest part. Um, mirror. OK, let me just exit uh, right. it's somewhere. Here we go. OK. So what I've actually done here is um, I've started up this demo before the presentation. It doesn't take very long. It takes a few minutes. Um, we might look at that later. Um, but w we did this um, based on this organization that we've got called Coca Pharmaceuticals. It's a, um, a re medical research company. It's gathering um, uh, sort of results um, on a weekly basis that it has to manage. And so they have a certain infrastructure, they have a lot of personas defined. This is all in the documentation. And this lab that I will show you, which will actually be, um, let me just check if I've run this one. You can step through, and I'm just going to uh, go to one I created earlier. Um, bear with me one sec. Asset management building a data catalog. Okay, so this is going to take us through a scenario um, which is actually using Nigeria, so it's actually running in the background and we're going to focus on these two people here. We're going to concentrate on Peter and we're going to concentrate on Erin and you know they're, they're going to actually catalog some of this new data that they've got. But first let's look at the infrastructure that uh, Coca Pharmaceuticals has got. And so they've got a number of different what we call platforms um, in Kubernetes. These are running in different pods as, as containers. But within each platform, we have uh, Egeria servers. And these are what um, effectively service the requests that are associated with different lines of business. So, for example, the manufacturing organization has got one virtual server. We've got our users on the data lake, which is Coco MDS4. They've got their own server. And um, this is what um, Coco is going to use. So we're going to um, run through this notebook step by step. The thing that, uh, OK, what I haven't done is configured it. So let me just run this again. Uh, it's funny. It's always the thing with doing live demos, isn't it? That they don't work. So let me just go to the top of this. And I thought I'd run it. Um, let's try again. So we will be there in a sec. So what we have is actually have a notebook 
that configures all of the servers, which should have run, um, but obviously hadn't, so it's running now. And this just used lots of REST API calls, so you can read through this in your own time, but that's actually configured the servers. And then I'm going to run this one, which starts everything up. And this is all Python scripts. You can go and look at the Python code. You can see what's actually happening here. OK, now we're ready, so now we're going to go back to this demo. OK, and this time it should be fine. OK, it's starting. This will, <laughs> this will take a, um, probably about two minutes. Um, so what we'll do is, whilst that's running, we'll talk a little bit about the scenario. So Peter's going to add some data sets to the catalogue. And um, a data set we record is what we call an asset. This is the thing that really provides business value. So it's the thing that we really, really want to manage. And so asset has um, attributes, of course, like owner through these relationships um, that we have. And so the Python code in the next section, which I'll run once the server's started, is going to actually um, add those assets into a Jira in the data catalog. So this is actually running uh, the REST API services uh, directly. We also provide uh, Java client libraries. So um, you can get sometimes more validation by using that than calling the REST API directly. Um, we're hoping to actually um, wrap up some of the libraries that we've got here in a shared um, Jupyter notebook, maybe into a Python library at some point. And actually, if anyone wants to contribute to that, that would be really useful as well. At the moment, this is running on the cloud, um, and it's just taking a minute. So we should be there soon. Um, so when we look at uh, an asset, in this case of a file, what we're actually going to create is a whole lot of different um, elements here. We've got the file system, we've got the different folders that they're in, and the actual data file. And all of these will appear in Nigeria as linked entities, so that we can navigate the relationships between them. And we should be there very soon. Uh, OK, there's a problem. <laughs> I don't know why that's not working. Um, OK, that is uh, going a little bit problematic. So what I'm going to do, let me flip back to uh, the charts. And if we've got time, we'll come back to the demo at the end. I think that's probably the best thing to do. OK, so let me just talk a little bit about community. Um, we've got... Uh, one project here, Ageria, which is in LFAI and data, but we're part of a much larger organization. Um, these are all the, not just LFAI data projects, but other projects in this space, and we can see lots of potential for linkages between them. For example, there's the Open Lineage project, which is really interesting. There's projects like Marquez, um, and you know, Open Lineage, we see a lot of other um, projects integrating with. So there is a presentation tomorrow, um, which you may be interested in, which is from our project lead for Algeria, which is uh, Mandy Shessel. So she's going to be presenting on Thursday afternoon. So I would definitely recommend that if you're interested in lineage. And another part, uh, of course, is what you can do, what, how you can play. So um, we have releases monthly. Um, that, that just happens without fail. It's something that we, we do. We worry about things like security. The, co the talks we've had here around S-bombs have been actually really interesting. It's something that we've talked about doing. We haven't done yet, but we need to. We manage all our dependencies. We try and minimize um, attack services and things like that because we are focused on making this an enterprise solution. Um, we also have things like uh, different storage backends. So you can have a metadata repository with Egeria, and you don't have to. You can also link to an existing metadata repository. But we've been looking at uh, XTDB, which is um, very scalable. Um, we can do things like time traveling with that. Areas that we're also looking at at the moment include um, making tutorials and education better, building connectors to multiple technology. We're doing a JDBC, a better JDBC connector uh, at the moment. There is a user interface um, which you can play with. I would recommend going back to the notebooks, and if we've got time, we'll quickly touch on that. And our repos, um, so github.com, ODPI, Egeria is our main repository. We've actually got about 30 or 25 or 30 in total. So if you can star that, if you like what you see, that's always really good for us too. And you know, if you use um, Egeria, if you take a look at it, give feedback. We've got Slack channels, we've got mailing lists. Um, we've got the issues, of course, in the repository. We have an Egeria docs repository, which is actually what builds uh, the AgeriaProject.org um, 
uh, website. And people that are new to the project often are the best people to actually comment on some of those documents because they, they make obvious statements about what's missing. So we absolutely would love um, your contribution. So with that, how long do we have left? Do we have time to flip back to the demo for a bit? I tell you what, why don't we start with questions and I'll look at getting the demo working whilst we're taking a few questions. Are there any questions anyone has on, on the virtual side or the physical side? I mean, the way that most people would get involved with this would probably be thinking about what technologies they were interested in connecting in and then be looking at creating connectors, Egeria connectors. There's a lot of detail which we haven't gone into. We're looking at the sort of very high level here. But looking at creating those connectors would be the way that you would get a new piece of third-party technology into this ecosystem. And we're accumulating connectors um, and I've written a couple, and we're getting a, a JDBC one's being written at the moment, so that will cover a lot of, the, of the connecting in sources. Um, we've, um, we've done one around Kafka events, and Kafka, we're, we're working on one for um, schema elements around events. Uh, we can do APIs, we can take in open lineage. So there is a lot of these connectors. We have a connector framework, which everything in Nigeria is written around. Um, everything's pluggable. So uh, it's uh, been written in a very sort of rigorous way, a very architected way. Uh, it, the way it was written initially was we were, the person that wrote it wrote the audit log first and then the connector framework. So this was a very rigorous, layered way to, um, to, to create um, the Ageria code base itself and as well as the open type system and the uh, protocol that goes around that to that facilitates their communication. That's, um, so we have that layer, and then we have this consumption layer around accessing the metadata in the different tools or different personas, this sort of, which I had as the different colored donuts. Uh, so you can, so a data science sort of um, way of um, accessing metadata or um, a, a, gov a discovery orientated view of the metadata. So, um, that's a, a little bit more detail about the technical sides and where you might get, might, as an organization, might want to get involved would be to assess whether there's existing connectors that you could utilize, whether there's new ones. If you, if you like this idea of it not being owned by one vendor, uh, because that's one of the big advantages of, of having it in open source, it's not owned by one, but we're, it, we all own it. So it's not a, um, a, a Microsoft versus Google versus an IBM sort of standard, this is something that we all sort of can own as a community and so that people tend to feel less, uh, less reticent to adopt it, it's a bit easier to, to adopt that sort of thing because it's ours to begin with. <laughs> so um, that's uh, a bit more detail, I don't know if that's triggered any questions or... It's written mostly in Java, uh, we do have some Python band bindings, so if you're looking to contribute, there, are, there is UIs. Uh, so JavaScript, there's a React UI, so we've got Node and React around that user interface area. So from a developer point of view, if someone wanted to be involved in the community, contribute code, that could be an area, either the React area, JavaScript area, the Java area, or the Python area, they're the main ones. So though we do have um, Kubernetes, uh, as Nigel talked about. Yes, yeah, so, we've, so, so these charts are based on Kubernetes. I don't know if you, you saw, I was reinstalling the charts as we were doing that. So we have a Helm repository and uh, there's instructions. We've, we've built these things called dojos, which are education sessions. So day one is called getting started. And in getting started, it'll walk you through using these notebooks and getting you for feel for what Ageria um, actually can do. And then we have a second day of dojos and that's actually um, working more at the sort of Java API level and um, walking you through building an application or a little plugin that works al alongside Ageria and shows you how to build your Java code. We will have more dojos. We've got one on governance uh, that we're working on and one on uh, production cases that we're working on. And so, yeah, I've been doing some of the Kubernetes deployments. Some, 
some of the, the people that we've got deploying it are obviously deploying in Kubernetes. It's still an area we're working very much on, so if, if anyone wants to contribute, that's a fantastic area for contribution to, especially in this sort of community. There's so much going on around Kubernetes. I um, started working on an operator, so we've got a Kubernetes operator, and what that means is it just makes it easier to uh, manage these systems because uh, you can um, clearly define some of the constructs that, that we have in Nigeria and do operations on them um, in the normal Kubernetes way using custom resources. So that's kind of quite an exciting area of development as well. So as you can see, what we've done here is we've restarted the lab completely with about three minutes to go. Um, so we're probably going to run out of time on this step, unfortunately. Um, we uh, have got um, a link in the presentation to ajiraproject.org. On there, it talks about our community, how to get involved. We have weekly calls. We have... Um, uh, the, the webinar program where we educate people on a particular subject. Um, come along to GitHub. I'm Planet F1 on GitHub. Uh, David's David underscore Radley um, on GitHub. Gave David Raddle, sorry, on GitHub. So come and take a look at the project. Um, and if you want to try this demo, I'm happy to uh, point you in the right direction if you get any difficulty with it. Um, it will teach you a little bit about how to make those REST API calls, how to actually uh, make use of Ageria and also look at some of the UIs with Ageria. So the question was what kind of policies can be defined um, for data security and are there any examples? The way that we define the word policy in our open types is a um, is, is actually it's a it's a verbose definition. So maybe all confidential data must stay in the building or something something very verbose. And then we have we in the metadata we define rules associated with it. So um, I mean security orientated rules might be around PII and sensitivity. Um, of, as you, um, you you need to treat PII data uh, differently to be able to comply with GDPR. So GDPR has a whole series of constraints about the way that you need to um, manage that data, and those will be, those could be art articulated in, in rules, on what we would call rules, that live under a, a policy. So um, that would be, and, and that might involve um, obfuscating, um, um, if you, I mean, we're the metadata layer, so we're not the one that's actually implementing the rules. <laughs> So you'd need to, um, you could look the rules up and then um, run them either in, in sort of enforcement road if that's the way that you want to run things or just to say how, how um, valid is my, uh, how compliant is um, this data and use those, role, those rules to describe that. Did that answer the question? I don't know if they, yeah, I just was, I don't, they probably can't hear my. <laughs> Okay. Anything, any other questions? I can see you're all rearing to start coding Nigeria um, PRs. I think everyone <laughs> wants to go and start working their S-bombs because that's been, uh, <laughs> everyone is doing that these days. So um, thanks everyone for coming. Um, hope it was useful to you. Um, Nigeria, we're on GitHub, metadata. Come and take a look if you're interested and thanks for coming today. Thank you. Thank you.